Hi, BC family. Welcome to your midweek devotion. This week, I want to talk about listening and expecting. Last week, I talked a lot about the importance of walking down to the still waters, of resting in the secret place, and of being peaceful on purpose. I want to continue along those lines today, but I'm going to talk about our choices. And first, I want to start with the word revelation. Revelation is an amazing word, and it's a revealing, right? We need that revelation knowledge from God. It's something that only God can give, and it's something that we get when we're truly choosing to go into that secret place, walk by the still and restful waters. Things that have been hidden, we need to be revealed to us, and that's what revelation is and revelation does. If you were to walk into a pitch black dark room, fumbling around looking for something, and somebody comes up along behind you and turns on the light, and suddenly there in the corner is the thing you're looking for, you don't say, oh, look what the light put there. I mean, no, because the light didn't put it there. No, it's the light had showed you what had been there all along, right? That is what revelation is. It's taking the time to seek God and rest in a secret place. And when you do that, God is able to come up behind you and turn on the light. That's why that secret place is so important. And he's Turning on the light, not suddenly putting something in your path, but he's there to show you what he has had for you all along, right? It's illuminating what has always been there. Healing, prosperity, the right job, joy, peace, the right words to say, the right things to buy. See, when you rest in him, and I said this last week, God goes to work. But when we work, God sits back and rests, and he's watching us fumble around in our dark room looking for our answers. The Bible, Matthew 6, clearly says, seek me first and then all these things will be added unto you. God wants to turn that light on for you, but he's waiting for you to seek him first in that quiet place. Now, here are the tough questions I want to ask this week. First, how are you entering into the secret place? And secondly, are you truly expecting? So let's take on the first question. How are you entering into his presence? Well, I went to church, I put on a sermon, I pray and talk to God throughout my day. Now, all of that's good, but when are you purposefully carving out time dedicated just to him? I was recently talking to my students uh, in class about the difference between hearing me and listening to me. And pastors even talked about this on Sunday. Pastor Starlene said, do you have something to take notes? you know, pen and paper or on your phone because you're not going to remember everything when you leave. And this is the difference between hearing and listening, right? Hearing is, I'm hearing the pastors as I sit in church. I'm hearing the sermon as I do my chores, but I didn't catch everything. You know, I didn't really maybe listen to everything the Holy Spirit was trying to bring up to me. For students, I know who's done this because after I'm done talking, five minutes later, you have a bunch of kids that come up and go, um, what are we supposed to be doing? I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. I said, well, you were hearing me, but you weren't listening to me, right? They were in the same room as everyone else, listened to the same instructions, but they just heard, they didn't listen. How many times do we do that in church? We're there and we're just hearing, right? We're leaning over and talking to our spouse or our friend. We're scrolling on our phone. We're, oh, I'm gonna fumble around in my purse. We're just kind of looking around the room. We're not really listening. We're not intentionally and purposefully taking notes with an expectancy to hear from God, right? To write down exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us because that's the biggest difference. So uh, a good example, um, and I show this to my students, is there was this little part on a TV show where these two couple were talking to each other and the, the spouse, the husband's going on and on about the video game and his wife's like, she's drinking her water, she's eating food. She's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, can you pass the butter? And he finally goes, you're not listening to me. And she was like, I'm sorry. And she stopped and she had nothing in her hands, focused solely on him and said, okay, go. And she stared at him the whole time and he restarted talking over and now she was engaging with him, being like, uh-huh, oh my goodness. Right, she was having that interaction with him. And for many of us, um, how many of us are, are like this with God, right? We're in church and we're listening, but doing all those things that I said, we're looking around the room, doing stuff, that's not intentionally listening. We need to stop and get out our pen and paper, get our notes on our phone, put a blinder on to everything happening around us and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me? And be purposefully and intentional, right? What about throughout our week, right? 
because I can, I can use church as an example, but I can use our week too. We're doing so many other things while we're talking to God, which again, isn't bad. I talk to God all day long when I'm at work and when I'm driving, when I'm doing that. But when am I sitting down full body and attention on him? Because one of my goals this year is to try and not read the Bible on my Bible app. Because how many times do we sit at home, not talking about church, and we open up the, you know, our Bible on our Bible app and then a notification pops up. An email happens, a ding happens, or an, oh, I need to jump over here and look at this. And, oh, I need to check my calendar for this, right? There's all those things that keep popping up. And again, we're no longer fully engaged and fully listening. So that's one of my goals this year is to not just hear, but to listen and be fully engaged. So this brings up my next question of expectancy. Are you expecting God to come up behind you and turn on the light? When you're sitting at church on Sunday, what is your expectancy? If you're expecting, then you're listening and you're in a position to listen, not just here, right? I want to read two quick stories for you that I'm sure you heard during Christmas, but I just want you to hear it again and think about that word expectancy. So I'm first going to read Luke 1, verse 12 through 18. So I'm going to get that really quick for you. Let's see, Luke 1. Should have probably had this ready. Here it is. Okay. So it says, well, where did 12 go? Ah, Zechariah was startled and overwhelmed with fear because an angel appeared to Zechariah. But the angel reassured him saying, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God is showing grace to you. For I have come to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. And then he goes on to list the answer of the prayer that Elizabeth, his wife, would bear him a son. Okay, so now we're going to skip down to verse 17. He will go on before the Lord as a forerunner with the same power and anointing as Elijah the prophet. He will be instrumental in turning the hearts of the fathers and tenderness back to their children and the hearts of the disobedient back to the wisdom of the righteous. Verse 18, here's the kicker. Zechariah asked the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? I love that part because it, it if you think about it back in verse 12, the angel said, don't be afraid. I have come to tell you that your prayer has been answered. So he's been praying for this all along. God shows up and says, hey, I'm answering your prayer. And Zachariah's response to him was, how do you expect me to believe this? So what does that tell you? That tells you that he may have been praying all along for an answer, but he never, ever expected that God would really show up. How many of us are praying for things in our life, but we don't truly expect God to actually answer that? I mean, if you continue on to read, the angel kind of gets a little bit irritated. <laughs> He's like, okay. And I kind of feel like if God didn't really need to use Zechariah and Elizabeth, the angel would have been like, that's fine. You don't need to have this blessing and favor. You go on and keep pretending that you're actually expecting your prayer. But instead, he closed Zechariah's mouth, so he stopped speaking words that were going to change everything, right? He said, nope, you don't get to talk anymore. You're done. But I found that very interesting that the angel said, I've come to answer your prayer. God's answering everything you've been praying for. And Zechariah said, how do you expect me to believe that? So it really made me think stop and think, hmm, do I really expect God to answer everything I'm asking for? And I'm going to talk a little bit more on that next week. Um, the last part is if I jump over to uh, verse 29, the angel again appear, appears to Mary. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and bewildered over what this may mean for her. But the angel reassured her saying, do not yield to your fear, Mary. For the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to supply, surprise you with a wonderful gift. So he said the same thing to Mary that he said to Zechariah. Don't be afraid. Don't let your fear, um, don't yield to your fear. Don't let it overwhelm you. And this time around, we don't see Mary going, yeah, how do you expect me to do that? No, she said, okay, I'm ready. Let's do this, right? She was on board with it. Um, the other part that I wanted to jump to really fast, and I encourage you guys to read this two is Proverbs 8. I was reading Proverbs 8 this morning and it really spoke to me about expectancy and having that expectant heart. I promise I'm almost done. Okay, Proverbs 8. So I'm just going to read different verses in Proverbs 8. 
Can't you hear the voice of wisdom? She speaks in the gateways of the glorious city, at the place where the pathways merge, at the entrance of every portal. There she stands, ready to impart wisdom and understanding, shouting aloud to all who enter, preaching her sermon to those who will listen. So if you think about that, wisdom is standing, it says, at the entrance of every portal. So think of, you know, a big gate where everyone's coming in and out and in and out. It's like the hustle and bustle of the city. Wisdom is there, shouting out everything you need to know, telling you what you need to do, directing your steps. But it says she's preaching her sermon to those who will listen. Who is listening? This week, you need to ask yourself, are you intentionally and purposefully expecting to hear from God? And are you truly listening? When you go to church, are you ready with your notes? Are you ready with your Bible? Are you ready to listen and hear the Holy Spirit speak to you and turn that light on? Or are you just there to be there and you're going to hear and you're going to catch some things, but you're not really going to retain that information? How are you throughout your week this week? I do encourage you that you talk to God throughout your day and you praise him and worship him throughout your day. But I want to encourage you too, what is that dedicated, purposeful time where you sit before God expecting for him to come up behind you and turn that light on, expecting to get guidance and direction and to be led? Expectancy. If you continue down in Proverbs 8, verse um, 9, it says, if you have an open mind, you will receive revelation knowledge, meaning if you are expecting. Wisdom is saying, if you are expecting, I'm going to give you that revelation knowledge. I'm going to come and turn that light on. Verse 14, you will find true success when you find me, for I have insight into wise plans that are designed just for you. I hold in my hands living, understanding, courage, and strength. And wisdom just continues to go on and on and tell you everything that God has for you, but it comes back to who will listen, right? Verse 18 says, unending wealth and glory come to those who discover where I dwell. So that again is the secret place. Are you coming to that secret place, casting all your care on God? I'm going to end with verse 34 and 35. Ready? listening with expectancy. If you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth within you. You listen for what I'll say, for the fountain of life pours into you every time that you find me. And this is the secret of growing in the delight and the favor of the Lord. Pastor said 2024, the word that stands out for IBC is favor. You will find the delight and the favor of the Lord when when you go to wisdom's doorway, when you go to that secret place where wisdom is and you have that expectancy, you listen and you're ready for that revelation knowledge. If you wait at wisdom's doorway, longing to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth within you and you will find his delight and favor. Have a great week. Bye.